Lads, I'm not even going to lie to you. Coming into FIFA 21, I said to myself that I did not want to be making a Fulham rebuild. But here we are, not even a week into the game's life cycle, and I'm making a Fulham rebuild. <laughs> Plain and simply, we suck. I've put it out there a few times, but for those of you who don't know, I am a big time Fulham fan. And I was really hoping after our shocking Premier League campaign two seasons ago, where we were relegated without a whimper, I was praying, absolutely praying, that things would be different this time around. But here we are, four games into the Premier League season, and we are a laughing stock. Four games, zero points, and 11 goals conceded. But I mean, that's still the same as Liverpool and Manchester United. Regardless, things need to change. Mr. Rebuild is taking over at Craven Cottage and going to save Fulham not only from relegation, but also turn them into European champions. This is the Fulham FC rebuild. Lads, we are on the grind towards 400,000 subscribers and are pumping out the FIFA 21 content. So if you are new around here, make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen a rebuild video in the past, here are the rules. The objective of the rebuilds are to win the UEFA Champions League final. All games in the rebuild are simulated. We cannot use the new jump in feature in rebuilds. The Champions League final, however, must be played. And of course, do not get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. There's the rules and objectives. Now it's time to jump into the rebuild. So this here is our starting 11 to kick off season number one. There is no denying that this team needs improvement. And the position that needs improvement the, the most is center back. Tim Ream, Michael Hector, uh, LaMarchon, these guys are not going to keep Fulham up in the Prem. So our first player departure in charge of Fulham is for Bobby Decadova reed We have sent the Jamaican striker to Lille for 2.7 mil. This man has been rumoured heavily with a move to Fulham in the past few weeks. Hopefully when this video is uploaded, it's actually gone through before deadline day. But we have signed Jean-Claire Todibo from Barcelona. 11.5 million pounds for the Frenchman. Fingers crossed he's a Fulham player in real life. We have also decided to sell Jean-Michael Siri here, the call the Ivorian midfielder, headed to AC Milan for 10 million pounds. Another addition to the defense here, to the centre-back role, we have signed Cesar Montez, or Cesar Montez, for 14.5 million pounds from the Mexican League. We've also sold Dennis Adoy to Bezistas. It's clean-out season at the cottage. Buy one, get one free. We're sending for Brit to Fiorentina for 1.95 million pounds. And we have made a massive, massive, massive addition to our attack. He's out of favor severely with Frank Lampard at Chelsea. So we've decided to bring Callum Hudson-Odoi to the best side of West London. We have signed Callum Hudson-Odoi from Chelsea for 11 million pounds. So there we go, lads. A very, very busy start to life in charge of the cottages. Very happy with the signings we've made. Tadebo, Montez, Hudson, Adoy all into the club. Decadova Reed, Seri, Adoy, and Fabrizio all out. The goal for me, though, is to survive relegation. And I mean, with the additions of Tadebo and Montez, our back line and our entire starting 11 as a whole looks much more rounded, to be honest. I mean, we're going to need certain players to really step up for us this season. Might even put Anthony Robinson in the starting 11 ahead of Joe Bryan, but... It's going to be a very interesting season one. Let's get to January and see if we are in the relegation battle or not. Okay, I can live with that start of the season. 21 games into the Premier League season, we find ourselves in 13th position on 24 points. We are, what, seven points safe from relegation, which is definitely not a comfortable spot to be, but at least we're not West Brom. A controversial decision here but we are going to sell Captain Canny, Tom Canny. I think, I don't know if it's fair to say, I don't know, a Fulham legend? He's captained us in two championship playoff finals, but Tom Canny, 
one of my favorite players. I'm going to have to abide by the rules of don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player because we've sent him to the Molyneux for 8.5 million. And we have found his midfield replacement. It is Christoph Baumgartner, the Austrian attacking midfielder, has signed from Montpellier for 22 million pounds. We have also sold Steph Johansson to Saint Etienne. So there we go, lads, a window focused on the midfield. Kenny Johansson out of the club, Baumgartner into the club. Hopefully Baumgartner can be a player for the future. Honestly, had never heard of him before we signed him there, but very excited to see what he can do for us. Let's go, lads. What a second half of the season that is. I would love for this to happen in real life for Fulham. We have finished in 10th position on 47 points. That is brilliant. That is more than fine with me. At the other end of the table, however, it is Liverpool narrowly edging out Chelsea and Man City to win back-to-back -back Premier League titles. And in the relegation zone, Aston Villa, Southampton, and West Bromwich Albion have all been relegated. Man City did take down Liverpool to win this year's FA Cup. That makes me feel pretty good about ourselves as well because we lost to City in the semi-final on a penalty shootout. And it's Manchester City also getting their hands on the Carabao Cup title. Juventus have won the Champions League and Real Sociedad have taken down Bayer Leverkusen to win the Europa League on a penalty shootout. So lads, this first season has exceeded all of my expectations. I thought we would be almost, not a shoe in for relegation, but I did not expect a 10th position finish this season. Over the moon with that, we crack on to fight another day in the Premier League here in season number two. It pains me to do this, but we are starting season number two, selling our championship playoff final hero, Joe Bryan to AS Roma, 7.8 million pounds for him. We're also still on Ivan Cavallero, which if I'm being too honest, given the start to the season he's had, I'm not overly emotional about this signing. I know he's a good player, but he has been absolutely woeful at times for Fulham this season. We've got 11.5 million pounds for the Portuguese winger. And the Jamaican Van Dyke, Michael Hector, the championship Van Dyke as he was called last season, headed to Hertha Berlin for 3.6 mil. Anthony Knockart out of the club as well, linking back up with Johansson, signing at St. Etienne for 3.35 mil. And Cyrus Christie headed to Leeds United on a permanent deal 1.6 million pounds lads i had to do it i absolutely had to do it we are bringing back a favorite son of fulham football club to the club on a permanent deal this feels so right ryan sessignon welcome back mate 32 million pounds to bring him from tottenham this is how things should be i want him to be in the squad and be an integral part of the squad when we eventually become European champions. We also are making an addition to our midfield. Mario Lamina was only at the club on a season-long loan last year. So we are signing Pedro Gonçalves from Sporting, or yeah, Sporting for 33 million pounds. Very interested to see how this guy turns out to be this year. So there we go. Quality over quantity this window, in my opinion. Sessignon and Gonçalves into the club. And then a lot of our mid-level players off for past year's greener. I don't know what to expect this season, honestly, given we finished 10th last year. But I'm excited for the challenge nonetheless. Just a little look at the squad here. Of course, we did lose Alfonsi Ariola. He was only here on a season-long loan last year. I'm going to give Marek Rodak the starting role for this season. Hopefully, the youngster can grow into his role and can develop with the rest of the squad. But I'm going to keep an eye on that one. Also, I have converted Ryan Sessignon from a left midfielder to a left winger on a permanent basis. Okay, I like what I see here. Halfway through the season, on the 1st of January, we find ourselves pushing for European football. Sitting in 7th position, I would love if we could make Europa League football this season. And I would love even more 
if we qualified for Champions League football. Also, I'm letting you guys know that Maxime Lamarchon will be leaving the club at the end of the season on a free deal. He was available on a pre-contract deal. I had no interest in re-signing him. So he's headed to the Turkish league next year. We didn't have a heap of money to work with here in this transfer window. If you guys have played FIFA 21, you would know that the transfer fees and values are quite inflated. So I've elected to sign Morgan Gibbs White to the club from Wolves for 11.5 million pounds. At the moment, my intention is to have him as a backup midfielder, play him occasionally, grow him hopefully, and then have him in the squad for a while hopefully. But Morgan Gibbs White, welcome to Craven Cottage. So there we go. Gibbs White into the club. Le Marchand out at the end of the season. Can we continue our push up the table and push for Champions League or Europa League football? Let's go find out the, the answer. Oh dear. Okay, scratch that. Back to reality, 10th position, exactly where we finished last season. Slipped down to 10th, but it's okay because Arsenal finished 14th and Arsenal suck. It's back to back to back. So three Premier League titles in a row for Liverpool, almost Centurions, but so far clear of the rest of the pack. Derby County, Sheffield United, and Brentford. Up yours, Brentford. Relegated as well, sucked in. Spurs have won a trophy. I repeat, Spurs have won a trophy. They've taken down Man United to win the FA Cup. Newcastle United have won a trophy. I repeat even louder, Newcastle United have won a trophy. Manchester City have come away as European champions, downing Atletico Madrid 2-1. Spurs have won another trophy. I repeat, Spurs have won another trophy. What? It's been a weird, weird rebuild so far, fellas. But that is season number two with the mighty Fulham FC done and dusted. We crack on, we prosper, and we look to continue our rise up English and European football. Season three at the cottage has begun and we have sold Harrison Reed to Torino for 17.3 mil. And the Rodak experiment is over. He didn't grow as much as I would have hoped this season. And I think if we want to make the push towards European football, we need a strong shot stopper in between the sticks. So we've sent Rodak to Hertha Berlin. Gonna link back up with Hector for 14.2 mil. I have also decided to loan out Steven Sessignon for the next year, headed to Crystal Palace on a one year loan. There it is, our new man in between in the sticks we have saved Dean Henderson from rotting on the Manchester United bench we have signed him for 49.7 million pounds it's a lot of money but it's necessary and I think it'll be worth it so there we go again priority was quality over quantity I knew we needed a new man in between the sticks Henderson was priority number one we've got it done our squad's gonna be looking so much better I'll show you the team in a second but the growth of some of our players has been unreal. So here's the squad. And I mean, you look at that. Zambo and Geese are up to an 84. Mitro's up to an 84. Sessignon up to an 81. Tete, our right back, up to an 83. The lads are growing spectacularly. 1st of January has come. And once again, we find ourselves in a very, very promising position. Sitting in 7th spot in the Premier League. 32 points. Villa, City, United, Leicester, all within striking distance. We just need to keep getting the wins, keep converting those draws into wins, and we'll be golden. I think if we want to make that push towards European football, we need to make a big statement. And I mean, when Sheffield United are offering you 55.4 million pounds for a 79 rated 25 year old centre back, you take that money and look for an upgrade. Montez is headed to Sheffield United for 55.4 million pounds. Thank you, Dynamic Player Potential. And we have found our replacement, and my word, have we got him at an absolute bargain. It is Ibrahima Kanante. He's signing from Crystal Palace for 60 million pounds. One of the best defensive prospects in the game, and we've got him for under his base value. I am happy with that. So we have taken a big fat dub in this transfer window. Montez out, Konate into the club. The defense has gone up significantly. 
and I'm hopeful that is the impact we need to get Fulham into the Champions League. Yes, it is. Come on, lads. We have snuck into the top four, finishing in fourth position on 68 points. So tight. We had Arsenal, Man United, Leicester, Man City, all within striking distance towards the last few weeks of the season. But we've got there. We've finished fourth and we have Champions League football at the cottage in season four. Oh my God. Everton, West Ham and Leeds have all been relegated. Everton got relegated. My word, that is a far cry from how well they're going in real life. Spurs have won another trophy. What is going on? And we have won a trophy here with Fulham. We finally get some silverware, taking down Manchester United 2-1 to win the Carabao Cup. Liverpool have taken down PSG quite comfortably, 3-0 to win the Champions League. Olympic Lyon have won the Europa League. And I mean, just taking a look at some of our best players this season, Mitrovic is 87 rated. I never thought I would see the day. I thought I would have to probably sell on Metro early in this rebuild or at least stick him on the bench as a little bit of a novelty. But the main man himself, King Alexander Mitrovic, Mitro, 87 rated, 24 goals. What a season for the big man. Over the bloody moon with how well life at Fulham is going so far. We're into the Champions League in season number four. Some big upgrades necessary to the squad but I'm very interested to see how the next 12 months plays out. All right, we're not here to stuff around. Season four, we're getting serious, lads. Kenny Tete, he's done his job at the club, but it is now time to take things to a new level. We have sold him to Real Madrid for 67.1 mil. And as a reply, we have gone out and signed Aaron Wan-Bissaka from Manchester United. He had less than 12 months remaining on his contract. So we have got him at a bargain bin price, a discounted 82 million pounds. Yes, I know it's an absolute steal. It's chump change. And I have decided to loan out Steven Sessignon to Everton again for another year. Want to keep the growth coming for the lad. So there we go. A big, big focus on the defense this window. Right back has been improved significantly, but I have kept a little bit of money in the back, in the piggy bank, just in case we have some, I don't know, I just want to suss out things come January. But one Basaka in, Kenny Tete out. So, getting into this fourth season, this is how the squad is stacking up. And again, the growth of some of our players has been mouth-watering. Our weakest links now are Todibo and Baumgartner, who are 83 each. Robinson's up to 84. Sessignon's up to 85. Mitro at an 87. This team is growing unbelievably fast. I am mildly optimistic about this season. So we are in the Champions League, of course, this season, and we have a pretty balanced group, honestly. I think we're the big dogs in it. I think we're the strongest team, but we've also got AS Monaco, Villarreal, and CSKA Moscow. So it's gonna be a battle, that's for sure. I'm interested to see how things stack up. Okay, that is not how I expected things to stack up. I thought Monaco, well, I should say Moscow, were a shoe-in for bottom place in the group, but it is ourselves and CSKA Moscow qualifying out of Group H for the round of 16. And the best part is that we have absolutely wiped the floor with the group. Undefeated, five wins, one draw, only three goals conceded. Conceded, I absolutely love that. But we are really gonna get to see what we're made of. In the round of 16, we have been matched up against Real Madrid. Let's go! Oh my God! We are top of the Premier League on the 1st of January. We are having an incredible season here at Fulham. I thought to myself, okay, we snuck into the top four again. All I want is to comfortably finish in the top four this season. We're doing that. We are definitely doing that. We are top of the league, six points clear. Only the one loss. This is going great. So again, we've had a great start to the season, but I feel like we just need to continue making improvements to the squad. I have decided 
I was torn up between it, but I feel like and Andre Frank Zambo and Gisa has kind of reached the end of his life cycle, or at least I think we can get somebody higher rated. So we have sold him to Burnley of all clubs. Didn't expect Burnley to shell out 106 million pounds for the lad, but they did, fair play. He's off the turf more, the poor fella. And there it is, lads. I think we can all agree this is a massive, massive upgrade for the midfield. Hasim Awa, the Frenchman, linked in real life with a deadline day move to Arsenal, coming to London, but it's not North London, it's West London. Signing with Fulham here from Juventus for 130.6 million pounds. Don't have a heap of money to work with still, but I feel like we need to get some slight improvements to the bench. So I have decided to sign Dakanam Jene, the centre back from Leicester City. I think he's from Togo. Yeah, from Togo for 21.2 million pounds. So there we go. That is a big January transfer window, splashing the cash here. Hasim Awa into the side. Very excited to see what he can do. And more importantly, I'm excited for the knockout rounds. Oh, of course, of course, of course. We sign Awa. And on the 1st of February, he bloody tears a, tears a calf muscle and he's out for seven weeks, which is probably both legs against Real Madrid. Okay, lads, here we go. It is time. The Champions League round of 16, the first leg away at the Santiago Bernabeu. For me personally, away goals is a must. We're going to jump in. We're going to simulate it. And the first leg is going to end up as a one-all draw. Okay. Assessing on getting away goal. If we can get past Real Madrid, I'll be feeling very confident. I am going to watch the simulation of this second leg at the cottage, however, taking on Real Madrid. Come on, Fulham. On the attack early on here, Mitro trying to get past the defender. Mitro! Oh my god, Courtois saved it. Free kick here for Real Madrid. Rodrigo standing over it. And I thought for a second there, Rodrigo scored it. Mitro swinging in the free kick. Hudson Adoy! Who's going to break the deadlock? Some passing play in the midfield here. Mitro going back to Gonzalez. Going through to Mitro! Courtois keeping it at one all. It's getting to the business end of this game, fellas. Come on, Mitro, going through, Gonzalez going back there, Mitro across the face, goal! Oh no, they've given it offside! But there it is, lads, we are through to the Champions League quarterfinals. I didn't even notice that Kenny Tete, our former man, got red carded. But, we're through to the quarterfinals on away goals rule against Real Madrid. And in the quarterfinals, it is a West London derby. It is Chelsea versus Fulham. Oh my god, a lot of bragging rights on the line here. Come on, Fulham. Okay, lads, the first leg is going to be away. We're headed to Fulham Road, taking on Chelsea at Stamford Bridge again. An away goal got us through to the next to this round against Real Madrid in that away leg, so we need the same here. We're going to jump in, taking on Chelsea, and it is going to once again be a one-all draw. I mean, it got us through the last time. We get an away goal, which is great. But is it going to be enough against Chelsea? Okay, lads, we have a narrow away goal advantage, but it is time for the second leg at the cottage. We're going to watch the sim, and hopefully it's going to be successful. Come on, lads. On the attack. Mitro going through. Gibbs what? Gibbs what of all players. He's in for Baumgartner. And now substitute has started the game and given us the lead. It's all worthless here if Chelsea get away back into it. Good defense. No, you can't leave. Griezmann, fuck. Oh my god, he's offside! Oh my. Come on, lads. On the attack again, Gonzalez going through. Going to Gibbs White. Gibbs White. Going! Oh my god, he must have put it over. There it is, lads. We have dominated. Absolutely dominated Chelsea. And we are through to the Champions League semi-finals. I mean, I thought we'd do well this season. But I honestly did not think we'd get to the semi-final. We keep getting these massive clubs put in front of us. And I keep thinking we're going to stumble at every single hurdle. But we continue to come out on top. I hope we can do it again. We're taking on Bayern Munich for a spot in the Champions League final to face what looks like PSG, who are 3-1 up against Barca. But we're taking on Bayern Munich. Come on, Fulham. A bit of a change as we have the home leg up first. We need to keep a clean sheet. We need to give ourselves every possible opportunity headed into the second leg. Ah, oh, it's a one-all draw, lads. I would have loved to have kept a clean sheet. I mean, we're getting the reversal of what's happened to us in every single knockout round so far. Knockout round game. It's a one-all draw. 
but Richarlison has given Bayern Munich the away goal advantage. So here we go, lads. The moment of truth at the Allianz Arena, season four, Bayern Munich, Fulham. Are we going to book ourselves a spot in the Champions League final? Come on, lads. Mitro's been holding it up well. He goes to Robinson. Robinson going to Sessignon. Sessignon looking back to Robinson. Back to Mitro. Mitro through. Oh, my God. How has Manuel Neuer Perrin saved that one? Come on. Midfield needs to do work. It's been such a boring game. Mitro. There. Mitro. That was the opportunity. Lads, we need the away goal. We're running out of time. It goes through. Oh, no. What? How has he saved that one? We've got the corner. Swung in. No. Come on, Fulham. Through. 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 Anthony Robertson of all players. The left back. Oh, my God. What is it with left backs and scoring insanely clutch goals for Fulham? We are deservedly through to the Champions League final. That was insane. So, in the Champions League final, it is Paris and London. Paris Saint-Germain. Fulham FC, who's going to come away as European champ? Taking a look around the other competitions, however, and it is Napoli taking down Manchester United to win the Europa League. We've done it, lads. I never thought I would see the day. As a Fulham fan, I never thought I'd see the day where Fulham are champions of England. Granted, it's only in FIFA. But let a man dream. We have won the Premier League here with Fulham. Absolutely wiped the floor with the rest of the competition. 18 points clear. That is unbelievable. At the other end of the table, however, it is West Brom, Bristol City, and Derby County all headed back down to the championship. A North London Derby in the FA Cup final, which Tottenham have got bragging rights in. And we have once again... Won the Carabao Cup, taking down Arsenal 1 0. The silverware keeps coming, baby. So, lads, I'm absolutely blown away by the growth of certain players in this squad. This team confuses the crap out of me, though, because I think we have a very, very strong starting 11. But in all honesty, our bench is whack. We've been very, very lucky that the only injuries we've really had have been to areas where we have coverage, and that's the attacking midfield. We've had our. We've had Bumgartner get injured. Luckily, Gibbs White's been there to step up for us. But the growth of our starting 11 has been unmatched. If you were to tell me that I was doing a Fulham rebuild and by season four, Mitrovic, Alexander Mitrovic, who starts the series like 25, 26, would be in the 90s, despite only having 82, 83 potential, I would not believe you. I'm very curious to see how this team translate into real FIFA. But we're about to find out. It is PSG, Fulham, fighting for that Champions League title. Come on. This is our shot, lads. A shot at European glory. Let's get it done with Fulham. Yeah, they've got us on our back heels here. I'm bringing Gonsalves back to help with the midfield. Lunging in. I'm all, we're all over the shop. We've got no shape. Don't overshoot. Just jockey. They go through. Don't let him turn you. Good tackle. What? Pen? Are you taking the piss? I thought it was a bloody good penalty. Bloody hell. And Mbappe stepping up. Come on, I know which way you're going, mate. I know which way you're going. You got nothing. You got nothing. You got nothing. Let's go, Hendo. Come on. It's been all PSG in the opening of this game. Keep soaking up the pressure, though. Just might be able to heal on the counter attack if we do. Sarabia going through. Isaac going through. And what is that defense? <sighs> PSG have just—they've just had their own way to start the game. And Mbappe's a different level. 
and PSG have the lead. Oh, we need to be intercepting those ones. And again, PSG just have us on our back heels here. <sighs> got to make. Oh, you got to make that tackle over the top. Oh, come on. PSG are running right here. We are showing no signs of improvement. And we are getting absolutely destroyed here. 2-0 PSG. And it's hard to say that they don't deserve it. All right, lads. I'm going to make some changes to our tactics and instructions and all that stuff. So we're going to do for our defensive style, uh, press after possession and then play possession as well offensively. PSG again. They just haven't stopped coming at us. Good block, Kanate. Good win, the 50-50. I see the run from Metro. Nice run. Good touch up against RK. He's got the pace against him. Metro scores. Let's go. Look at that ball. Metro, with our first shot of the game, has got us a goal back. Beautiful counter attack. Beautiful goal, Metro. Metro. Corner here for us early in the second half. Hudson and Doy swinging that one in. Toddy Bo, get to it, Metro. You've got to win that 50 50. Nicely done. Come on, play it out from the back. Juan Bissaka, a bit of space down the right-hand side here. In fact, we've got ages of space. I'm just going to run this as far as possible with Aaron Juan Bissaka, watching the runs that are coming into the midfield. But Juan Bissaka, looking for some support, goes back to Baumgartner, who goes to Mitrovic! Tied game! Come on, Fulham! Mitro, what a finish! What a pass, Baumgartner! That was a clinical counter-attack. Two all. Let's go. Ever since the opening few moments, we have absolutely been over them. Good passing play. Baumgartner. Up to Mitro. Mitro. He's got Ake's number. Mitro. Shoots it. Fuck me. I tried to go for the perfectly green time finish. Good passing play. Hudson Doy. Hour going here. Baumgartner. Overlapping run. Mitrovic. Angle shoots. Scores! Mitro! Hat trick for Mitro! In the Champions League final. Oh my god. PSG 2-0. And you fucked it up. Do not give PSG away back into this game. They have not been good since the opening moments. Canate, just keep jockeying against your fellow Frenchman. Don't lunge. Oh god, I thought we were going to give away a penalty. Don't give him a shot. <sighs> okay. It's calm. It's calm. It's calm. Counter-attacking time. No. Defender, 84th minute, Juan Bissaka up against Juan Bernat. Get back midfield. I'm having a cover with Juan Bissaka. Ah, no, clear it. No. Get in front of it, block. Just get rid of the fucking thing. Fuck me. There it is, lads. We have done it. Oh, my God. That was a stressful, stressful final. But we have completed the rebuild with Fulham FC. Oh my god, that might be the craziest final we have had maybe ever in a rebuild. That is insane. Lads, if you enjoyed this rebuild, oh my god, I'm so drained. Make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Enjoy the title celebrations. It has been Jared HD here. Mr. Rebuild out. I'm out. Peace. Oh my god, I need a nap.